shout out to uh, Obradovich and Etudis, you know, because I know it wasn't all over. I know it gave them a lot of headaches, man. <laughs> <laughs> what up, EuroLeague fans? Welcome to another episode of A Quarter with Kyle Hines. Today, we have a very special episode, um, a legend in capital letters in EuroLeague basketball, just basketball in general. Um, I mean, this guy is, you know, one of the, the all-time great, um, you know, one of the the greatest, you know, Americans to play um, in EuroLeague basketball and overseas basketball, period. He's currently the assistant coach of the Houston Rockets. He's a three-time EuroLeague champion, has won domestic championships and all type of trophies and awards and accolades and we can go on and on. Um, and that is the legendary Mike Batiste. Mike, what's up, man? Thank you for man. taking the time. Anytime, man. Like like I told you earlier, man, I got the call and they said, Hey, Kyle, wanna interview you? I was like, just let me know, I'll make the time and, and we'll 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 make it happen. I appreciate it, man. Like I said, it, it means it means a lot. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna jump right into it because we we don't got a whole lot of time. I thought you busy you on the road right now. So, right. you know, with that being said, you know, because you have your day job and you know, with the Rockets and doing different things, how much EuroLeague basketball are you watching nowadays? I mean, as as much as I can, you know, you, you know, EuroLeague basketball comes on like one, two o'clock up over here, like yeah. midday. So it's like a perfect time for me to watch the game. And depending on if I'm at the arena or I'm at home, like I either go right into, you know, my responsibilities, uh, you know, with the Rockets or I hop in my car and I get to the Toyota Center and uh, I carry on, you know, my responsibility throughout the night. So who are some of the, yeah, the favorite teams that you like to watch? I mean, obviously, Pat I mean, I know that's near and dear to your heart, but who are some of the like, other favorite teams that you that you usually watch it? Oh, man, listen, I've, I've watched the Olympiacos play. I've watched Barcelona play. I've watched Madrid play. I've watched Santa Monaco. I've I've got a chance to watch enough teams uh, uh, to know how strong the EuroLeague is. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when you look after those top four or five teams, I mean, it's a, it's a gauntlet match. And it's a, it's a fight for those, you know, those last three, four spots to get into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the special part about Euroleague. I mean, especially this year that, you know, like they had the tagline, every game matters. To you, what makes Euroleague basketball so special? Like you see it, it's, it's the every game, you know, matter mentality. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's 40 minutes, you know, yeah. over here is 48 minutes. So the moment that ball is tossed in the air, like that jump ball means something. Like, to, you know, that first possession means something. It sets the tone for everything, you know what I mean, that you do offensively and defensively. So uh, even though, like, I feel like the, the year league is really tough in competition right now, uh, but in my time, we still had that same mentality. You know what I mean? So uh, every game was important. Sometimes you can lose one or two games. It, it can really, uh, you know, put you in a bad standing. So every game matters, even now, 2023, and even, you know, when I checked out in 2014, you know what I mean? The, the same moniker, uh, moniker still applies, and that's what makes uh, EuroLeague very special. Uh, we talked about a little before, mm-hmm. it was like, it seemed like, honestly to me, like just yesterday, like he was just there in EuroLeague, and it's like you said, 2014, almost, you know, 10 years has passed since you last played. Yeah. You, do you miss it? Do you miss it? I mean, do you miss the, the competitive spirit? Do you miss the competition playing in Euroleague? Uh, of course I do. And, you know, even, you know, being assistant coach, and, you know, you, you know, we're playing against, you know, some of the best players in the world. Like in my association, like sometimes, you know, your competitive fire kicks in and yeah. it's like you talk to one of the players and they're like, oh, snap. I'm just like, like look, man, my bad. But you, <laughs> you know, you, you can't just like take your foot off the gas pedal. You, yeah. you got to understand and certain guys like who you playing with and to get respect like from your peers is the the ultimate honor. And, you know, when you're playing against, you know, guys that you grew up uh, idolizing or guys that you respect, uh, you know, you, you want to have that uh, respect level from those guys. And so I'm just trying to get these young guys to play as hard as they can uh, every single possession. You know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, when they do, it, it's a very beautiful picture. And you know that the process is 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 fulfilling. Now, I talked about the process, you know, you, immediately when you retired in 2014, you jumped right into coaching. So mm-hmm. what made you, you know, want to become a coach? And, and what are some of the most, like, you know, gratifying parts of coaching for you? 
Um, I, I wanted just to stay around the game. You know, I just yeah. didn't really know what level it was. And then I got the call from uh, David Griffin, who's now the general manager of the New Orleans Pelicans. Yeah, uh, great, uh, great guy. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, that's that's my brother right there, man. Shout out to Dave Griffin. Um, you know, he gave my agent a call and heard that I was like on the fence 50 50 by retiring or possibly playing another year. Uh, but he was like, listen, if Mike, you know, choose to retire, just let him know, hey, we have a spot here uh, in the G League in Canton, Ohio. If he wants to come down here and just uh, give these kids his knowledge and experience, whatever, we would love to have him. So when I finally made the decision to retire, I went and you know, joined the uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers Cats in Charge organization. Uh, the head coach was uh, Jordy Fernandez, who was now the associate head coach with the Sacramento Kings. Um, and I just told myself, listen, I'm going to go down there, be around the game. If I don't like it, I'll try to find something else to do. Mm-hmm. But when I got down there, you know, I started to, to, to like everything that was never really given to me from some standpoint. You know, as a player, yeah. you just come in, you know, you get your ankles taped, you get your therapy. Just you lift your weights, right? You you get the game plan from the coach, and you you know you locked in. But now I get to see what's on the other side of the fence, how they prepare, how they stress. You know what I mean? How they try to put guys in the right position to succeed. And as a coach, I have to worry about all 12, 15 players like that. Like before with myself, I just worried about like how I do my job, my responsibility, and you know how how I can lead from that position from that uh from that uh that position you know with my responsibility so uh that was one thing that really intrigued me and even now um you know with the young group that we have here uh in houston it's a perfect opportunity for you know like my leadership and everything because i've been 20 years old 21 years old uh we have a uh a balance of uh american players we have some european players as uzman garuba Alper and shingo Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Boban Mar- Mariadovich, so we have some guys from Europe uh, uh, that, you know, respect me and see me play so they know that when I say certain things, it's it's paramount, you know what I mean? Because they know I've played the game and with the background that I have of me being a coach now, it's it's to me, it's like a double-edged sword, you know what I mean? So yeah. It's it's that those are the things that 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 got me into it, and those are the things that are are gravitating to me now, just because there's so many European players that are in the NBA right now, and they've seen me play at one point in time, or they heard about me at one point in time. So to 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 be coaching those guys, it's like a it's a full circle moment for me. Um, you know, you there's so many European players that are in the NBA, as you just said, and so many of those young guys watched you play when they were growing up. And I'm sure many of those guys come up to you and, and, and pay homage or show respect or talk about, you know, the inspiration. So what does that mean to you? You know what I mean? It's like when these guys come up, some of these superstars, I'm sure like the Vukas and even like the Giannis's and the Damasis and, you know, like Fobans, all these different guys. What does it mean to you when these guys come up to you and they 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 say something to you? Like what like what type of thought does that give you? Man, it's it's a it's a chilling moment. I'm I'm not yeah. gonna lie. You know what I mean? Because these guys are the greatest in the association, you know what I mean? And and in some part, they're inspiring me, you know what I mean? Because I get to watch these guys on a night in and night out uh, basis, and I get to steal some of their their blueprint in terms yeah. of how you teach guys footwork, pump fakes, you know, you do, you know you're taking stuff from Luka, you're taking stuff from Giannis, you're taking stuff from, from Jokic, uh, but to get those guys just to shake my hand and to say, hey, like, I watched you play at Pan tonight, go watch when you use the Matias with Spanulis. It's trust me, man. It sends a, a chill down your spine to know that you inspired them just a, a little bit. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, just to have that honor, man, it's, it's really an unbelievable sugar. I'm sure it is. Um, And then, you know, I'm, I want to know also, too, that most of the time in your career, you work with Coach Robinovich, who's considered one of the mm-hmm. greatest coaches, you know, of, of all time in Europe and mm-hmm. of all time. I wonder now that you're a coach, do you have like a new appreciation of like, you know, some of the things that you was trying to tell you back then or so? Because I'm sure like you guys are a player, you know, we get it. We like, you know, he don't know what he's talking about or you kind of like, yeah, like, I don't, but now as a coach, you're like, you're like you know what? I, I, I kind of get it more like what he was trying to do. We ride like that. And that's why I said basketball is a full circle. It's, it's full circle for me because you know how like your coach is trying to like push you to the to your limits and you like you said you're just letting it go through one and out the other like man why is he on me right now yeah but i i get the care factor i get the competitive spirit that was inside of obradovich and even though 
I'm not a player anymore. Like I'm still a competitor. Like I, I yeah. want I want to win with my mind. Uh, we play Uno with my kids, board games, anything like with my wife, my family. Like man, I, I want to win, and I'm upset. Like when I lose, and I want to keep playing till I, till I win. And sometimes it's a, it's a mental drag like for my family because you know they don't know that I don't, I don't I don't like to call it quits. Yeah, you know, but that's just the 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 chip that 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 I had internally inside of me when I was a player, and that chip internally is still inside me as a coach. So. Uh, yeah, and like I, I totally get it now. It's just, it's just like you remember how your mom and dad used to tell you certain things. You'd be like, man, whatever. Like you know, and now you got kids. Like I remember, I told my mom like five or six years ago. I was like, mom, I totally understand now. Like everything that I just say that raises the the sacrifices, the discipline. Like I was like thirty five years old at this point, and telling her this, but like I totally understand. And so, like, I had a full circle moment as a parent, you know what I mean, as a, as a husband and, and a father. And now I'm having a full circle moment, you know what I'm saying, as a coach. So uh, it gives me a very wide perspective on on, the, on life and the game. I can, yeah, I can imagine. I've done the same thing. I've actually, like, called my mom and apologized. Like, no, mom, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, get it. I did. I was like, three kids running around. They don't listen to me. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Right, right, right. Now, um, talking about full circle moment, um, you know, two of your former teammates, uh, Kill Bill, Spinolis, and, and, and Sardis, are coaches in Europe, Sardis of Barcelona, um, you know, Billy, you know, in Greece. Now, for you, would you ever, you know, with you having so much success in Europe, so much success in EuroLeague, and now as an assistant coach in the association for the last, you know, almost 10 years, would you ever see yourself coming back to Europe to be a coach or do you have ambitions of possibly even coaching here or possibly being a head coach here? Yeah. I mean, listen, like I've, I've never, you know, shut the door down to those opportunities. You know, my name is always linked with, with Pat and of yeah. course, you know how that goes, but those are just, you know, to me, those are just rumors. Nothing ever really seriously happened uh, from my end or their end. Hand. So, uh, but yeah, man, I, I'm totally open to anything. Uh, you know, I've been close to 10 years, uh, coaching now. And when you watch games in NBA, you watch games in your league, there are a lot of similarities and styles of play. And, you know, I wonder if stuff that we run here to NBA can work over there in Europe. And I wonder if stuff that, you know, we ran in Europe and my time at Path and Michaels can work here. So, um, it's, it's definitely an opportunity or something that I, that I see doing in the future. I don't know if it's next year. I don't know if it's. When I'm 60 years old, I have uh -huh. no idea, but um, coaching is a worldwide conglomerate now. And, right. you know, to be a head coach anywhere, man, it's it's a real unbelievable honor. So, you know, we'll see. You know, I'm going to keep knocking down these doors here uh, and see how far it can take me here. I would love to be a head coach here uh, in the NBA, but, you know, if uh, there's another opportunity arising, then I'll look into it and, and see if it's best for, for me and my family. Definitely, definitely. Now, as a as an American player, um, for me, you were the benchmark, right? When I first came mm -hmm. to Europe, everybody said Mike Batiste, Mike Batiste. Everybody said, like, if you want to play well, you have to, you know, follow what he did. And for me, I mean, I told you this before, but like, you were that benchmark. You were the person that I was always trying to, you know, trying to reach, trying to get to that point mm -hmm. where, you know, I wanted to be, you know, on the same stage or on the same, you know, kind of pedestal as you was. Now, for you, I want to know if you had advice for other American players, because you you know this, that that's sometimes the biggest struggle for American players coming overseas and kind of stick around. You were able to have a long career and a long career, successful career in one place. What advice would you give to young American players that want to come over and want to have success in the EuroLeague? You just got to be open-minded, you know what I mean? Because, like, you're going into another world, uncharted territory, uh, different people, different language, different religion, different culture. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's tough because I, I remember my first year in Belgium, like I want to go home every single day, man. I will look out the window and I'm like, it's, it's over. Like yeah. I'm ready to call. I'm ready to call my mom right now until I'm ready to pack my bags and go. But then if I go back home and everybody saw that I quit, then everybody yeah. in my city called them, call me a quitter. That's something that just couldn't hang over my head. So I just had to stick it out. You know, everybody spoke French in Shalawa. Like the language was tough. Sometimes, you know, you go to the store and you're trying to have a conversation on just to buy something. It was difficult. Uh, so you just have to, you just have to buy in and stick with it, you know? And I think uh, just from our culture in general, just how, you know, the, the stipulations that we come from or how we grow up, 
I feel it's it's a it's a it's a it's a very good test mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of us to go up over there and see how we grew up mentally prepares us for situations like that. Like yeah. I didn't know that that would prepare me for that, but then it's like the next year I went to Italy, you know, in Biella, the same situation. The language barrier was a little bit different. Uh, you know, the the people was different, the food, the culture, everything, and it was something that. I had to get used to. I was homesick again. Sometimes I wanted to quit, but again, I just kept pushing, showing up to practice every day, getting better. And certain, you know, things just started getting better for me, you know, year by year, day by day, practice by practice. And uh, of course, you know, I took the one year in the NBA with Memphis, where I'm at right now. And mm -hmm. then, you know, after that one year, my journey to Pantanico started. So um, I, I would just be open minded to everything, you know. Uh, it's going to be difficult. The coaching style is going to be difficult. Some of your teammates, uh, it's going to be difficult just because they're just different. Their demeanor is different. Uh, their yeah. culture is different. So all that stuff, uh, really takes a open-minded person. It really takes a lot of buy-in to really be accepted. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Oh, you, you want to be accepted and you want to be respected again from your teammates and from your peers. And, uh, once you get into that, type of bubble that type of company then you know good things are going to happen for you i agree man. i think that's that's perfect advice that's 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 what um i learned early on that you have to be open-minded open-minded to everything and i think once you once you have that um you know you have the ability to kind of be as, as successful as you want to be i think that's that's great right. that's great advice yeah yeah so i mean it, it was always you know not i mean i would say it wasn't always easy for me you know what I mean? Like even even my first couple of years in Panthinicos wasn't easy for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just coming from the NBA, all the freedom that we have to go out and curfew and this, this and that. Like oh, it was a big time adjustment for me. It wasn't no easy cakewalk, you know what I'm saying? My nine, ten years at Panthinicos. Like I had some struggles there, but uh, you know, a lot of it to this, you know, they put their arm around me, they just you know, kept pulling me in, kept me on the straight path, the straight path and narrow to success and you know, we all saw what happened now, you know what I mean? Like you said, tons of the titles, accolades, you know, comes after that. Uh, so, you know, shout out to uh, Obadovich and Etudis, you know, because I know what I all know. I know I gave them a lot of headaches, really. <laughs> <laughs> I gave them a lot of headaches. But, all, but, all, but all. In, return, in return, they 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 got what they wanted, you know what I'm saying? For me, I got what they wanted um, out of them. You know, what I mean, it was a perfect relationship for the time that we worked together, man. So it was for sure, and I'm sure it's a it's a relationship and a bond that'll last forever, forever. You know, like we don't always talk in it every time, but once I send a text or a call, like they pick up and respond immediately. So like that's something I really truly appreciate, you know. And I know that they're busy, I'm busy with my schedule. Sometimes it's hard to you know get in contact with one of that sometimes, but you know uh, we'll 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 be in contact in the near future. Your favorite Euroleague player to watch today, or you can give me a favorite Euroleague player to watch today. Uh, you know, I'm I'm always rooting for my country, man. You know what I mean? So like, I love watching Mike James. Uh, Dwayne Bacon is also a guy that I coach uh -huh. Charlotte and Orlando. I like watching DB down there, Pat and I coach. Uh, I like watching Lorenzo Brown. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, those are guys I really, really pay attention to. Um, your favorite all time out. I mean, when you at the crib, you know, chilling or now, I mean, you need to, you need to put something on to catch a vibe. What, what is it? Um, you know, I'm a West coast kid. I grew up in Long Beach city, you know, Snoop Dogg is, 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 is my favorite rapper of all time. Sorry. You know, I'm biased about that too, but <laughs> if you really, if you really saw like how Snoop grew up, you know I mean? I got to see a first hand view of how. He grew up in the slums yeah. of the city and he rose above everything. So that's really inspirational. Um, I also got a chance to see Willie McGinnis, you know, uh, Super Bowl champion with the New England Patriots, Tyus Edney, Olympiaco uh, sub, all player, but one of your league in Zalgiris. These were like, you know, three guys in my city that everybody looked up to. And uh, if I had one album to knock, it's, it's going to be, you know, the Snoop Dogg first album. You know, I, you can't go wrong with that, man. Everything right. about the city, how, the streets that I walked down to, the liquor stores that we used to go to and buy our snacks. It's all up in there, man. So anytime I, I throw that on, I, I can be in Italy right now. You know, I used to bitch you. Time I used to bitch, bitch you feel like at home. Bitch you feel like, man, I'll be right at home, man. And, uh, you know, you throw anything off from Snoop, Dog Pound, those those type of guys from that G-Funk era. 
I mean, it 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 get me going. So I got to be real selective when I when I listen to those type type of albums. Now I'm 45 years old, like it can't get me amped up like I was when I was 20 something years old. Or I'm about to go in a walker and play a game in front of 20,000 people. So I got to be real selective when I listen to those classics. You know, you know, you know, you bring you know, you bring that out. It's like it's like yeah, yeah, you know, you bring, yeah it's my mercy. Right, like 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 every time like we fly in the you know to to LA, we play LA as a Clipper. Yeah. You know, I might put on my West Coast playlist, but uh, you know, other than that, man, you know, I'm I'm 45. I got to listen to something a little bit more mellow. <laughs> but again, like you know, those those are uh you know in those times, if you could grow up in those times of that G Far Death Row era, you know what I mean? You know, I had a first hand tour of everything that was going on like in my city it was just a whole different vibe man growing up in that that 90s era in in long beach and you know that inspired me to do great things too because now that i'm playing basketball i want to push the line to be somebody from my city i do it to do what they're doing and um you know i felt that you know uh i did everything that i could especially being over in europe and winning championships accolades and you know so every time you hear about oh that's Mike Batiste where he from they go hey I'm from Long Beach City Long Beach that yeah that 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 means a lot to me you know I tatted that on my forearm you know what I'm saying when I when I was in Italy because I knew the journey that I was embarking on was going to be difficult and I might have to say bye to you know my city and a lot of yeah. friends to embark on this journey and uh you know once I made that sacrifice and commitment there was you no know, really no looking back it was looking forward so I mean the city is always with me man everywhere I go um, even when I, you know, touch down and tap in with a lot of people from back in the day, man, it's 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 still love. That's love, man. That's love, man. The last question I have for you, you talked about the journey, you talked about your overseas life. Like I said, it's been a minute since you've been over here, but what is the one thing that you miss about overseas life? Um, I think the simplicity, you know, right. saying of, of just life, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think uh, being in Europe, it's, it's a total different world. I think uh, you can find just being that you want in Europe, you know what I mean? And I think, um, you know, being in Athens for so long, you want the fast life, you want the fast life, you want the the slow, chill life, you can get that as well. And I think I got the, 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 the best sides of both, you know what I mean? I was young when I got to Athens and, you know, I grew up, I became a grown man there. I found a, a different way to to chill and to be in peace. So I just think the simplicity of life up over there, um, you know, is something that I really miss. The food, the people, uh, it's it's a lot of things that's, that's tied into it. But, uh, you know, living here in America, it's a fast life. You got to keep up with a lot of things. But I, I think, you know, in Europe, you know, you just you live the speed that you want. Nobody really cares about it. You know what I mean? So. That's one thing that I miss, but you know, we're all, all humans. We all adapt to the, the, to our environment and, you know, shoot, I'm, I'm back in America now, man. So, you know, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm back to being more American than European now, but you know, I still, you know, have European roots and, uh, that's, that's never going to leave. Me. Yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, you know, stepping into the quarter with me. Um, best of luck to you and the, and the Rockets. But like I said, man, like to me, I mean, you're the, you're the gold, you're the legend, man. Like I said, man, you were, you were the, you were the person that I was chasing my whole entire career. You know, everybody was always talking about Mike Petit. So, man, I appreciate you. Appreciate all the things that you brought to the table. Appreciate all the doors that you opened up, all the trails that you, that you helped lay, um, for, you know, not only for me, but for all American players, man, you, you, you're well-respected, highly regarded. And I think, you know, you're somebody that is, is, uh, is, is an amazing human being and has done so many great things for all of us, man. So I appreciate you and so much. I appreciate that, man. It's like coming into this game, you know, you're not, you don't know how many people you're going to inspire, you know, what change you're going to set and to see you, you know, take the torch and, and run with it and even surpass me. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't know. Like, I got three titles, you got four. So now you didn't set the trend, you know what I'm saying, for somebody else to look at you now and be like, hey, I want to be that guy. So, you know what I mean? I, I, I appreciate you, man, just taking the torch and just carrying the game uh, for us in the right way, man. So, like, big up to you as well, man. Thank you. You're Elite Fans. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of A Quarter with Kyle Hines. Take care. Peace. Peace.